Welcome to Bunny Fish Crafts. I'm your host, Heather, known as Bunny Fish on Ravelry, Instagram, YouTube, and Patreon. Today is Friday, June 14th, um, 2019, <laughs> and this is episode 44. Grab some sticks and string and come sit with me. Today was the last day of school. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> I am it's bittersweet I'm kind of excited kind of not excited um it means that routine is gone which I thrive in routine so I'm going to try to <laughs> make a new routine which is never successful during summertime but you might make it I might we'll see what I can do um so this week, I really, really don't have a lot of crafting to show you. The ZK Knit Along ended on Monday, and since then, I have I have been crafting, but like, not a lot, not a ton. And also, a lot of things happened this week. So, Mara had a field trip on Tuesday. Um, the school had. Um, field day. Field day. So that threw off all of the schedules. And yesterday, instead of having lunch in the cafeteria, lunch was in classrooms. So I was covering individual classrooms. And so, like, that knitting time got thrown off. And last night, my nephew graduated from eighth grade. Oh my gosh, I was a big baby and I cried throughout. So you guys know those videos where they show deployed parents coming up on stage and surprising their kids? That was a real thing last night and I don't think there was a dry eye in the gymnasium. It was amazing. It was just, oh, it was so beautiful. It was so beautiful. So the gentleman got the young gentleman got called across the stage and they read off his list of awards that he was getting for the year and where he plans to go to high school. And then he said, and we have one more award for you. Your mom returned from deployment. And he like broke down into tears and she started crying. And then his two little brothers came running up. Oh my gosh, it was so much. I'm having all the feels right now thinking about it. And then um, they started a new award because um, I don't remember if I've talked about this on the podcast at all. My daughter's best friend's older sister um, had brain cancer. She was in ninth grade and she, before she went to high school, she was a student at my kid's school. Um, she lost her battle over the weekend, last weekend, so Saturday, so almost a week ago now. Um, so they made an award in her memory because she was one of those people who's just like so super nice and like sparkles, you know? So that was very emotional, emotional last night too. Um, yeah, I just been a long week of stuff happening and we went to the park several times and did we go to the library this week? I feel like we did. Mm, I think so. I think so. Yeah, just been a lot of stuff doing. Yeah. Since I don't have a lot of knitting to show, at the end of the video I um, flashed my stash on Instagram and I will put that in. And now that we're several minutes into recording and minus a child who is not actually gone. He's just sitting over there. P.S. I think my daughter must be going through a growth spurt because we went to the park today after school and she slept almost the whole time we were there and then we came home and I took a nap and I woke up and she's sleeping. Has she been sleeping the whole time we were home? Probably half, yeah, so I think she is hitting her growth spurt right now. Um, anyway, that 
is not administrative stuff. I, I said, or I thought I said I was going to talk about administrative stuff, and instead I'm talking about sleeping children. Um, so administrative, by the time this video is up, all the small things will have started. It is probably my favorite knit along of the year. I love working on all of my scrappy projects and having them count for a knit along. I not only count how many finishes I have, so, you know, small things like um, squares on my mitered square blankets, the flower motifs will count, um, but also socks that I finish count. So a single sock counts, an entire sweater, an entire blanket, a single motif for a um, like a barn raising square or a mitered square. One counts. Each one counts. Um, post them in the Ravelry chatter thread. There is no finished objects thread. It all happens in one place and I compile a list of who has entered how many times and then use random number generator to pick winners. Um, I do not have prizes picked out yet. Something I need to work on. I think that I'm going to have a couple mini skein packs that could win. Um, and then I don't know. I don't know what else, what other small things will make it that way, but I'm sure I could figure out something. Um, if you would like to donate a prize, this is the knit along where people um, are pretty, generally pretty generous and donate little things here and there, which is really nice. Um, I love group participation. So that is going on. It ends on um, Labor Day in the U.S. So it's a whole, whole summer for me, <laughs> knit along. Um, because my kids go to school the next day. There are no yardage requirements. Um, works in progress count. So if you are, you know, on the cuff of a sock or something, like a toe-up sock, you're on the cuff, that totally counts. Put it in. And I love this knit along so much. Hashtag BPH small 19. Um, if you're playing along on Instagram, so we can follow all of that to what knitting I do have to show you. I didn't finish any projects this week. I did finish the first carousel socks, carousel sock by Louise Robert. And here it is. I'll insert a picture so you can see it on my foot, but it is very, very cool. So I used 716 knit, 716 sock um, striping in a colorway that has a bad word in it. And then I used Premier Serenity sock black for the heels, toes, and cuffs. For the toes and cuffs, I um, picked up 60 stitches and worked them down. And then for the heel, I did a... I picked up the stitches along this edge and increased for a gusset because I think the pattern has you do an afterthought heel where you like spiral in. That heel does not fit my heel. Um, this, so with these two being almost equal in stitch count and stuff, my measurement here is bigger than my measurement here. Like I need this to be longer. I need more space added. So I did a flegal heel, which required me to um, increase stitches. So I worked back and forth on this sock and attached to this side the same way that I had been doing for attaching the spirals. And through increases up to 38, I did a one-to-one -one ratio. And then from 38 up, I realized that that wasn't going to give me that's when I tried on the sock and I realized that that wasn't going to give me um, a deep enough, long enough, 
heel. So this measurement, whichever one you want to call this, I needed to add more space than I was adding. So from then on, for the increases to increase my gusset, I did essentially a short row without connecting to the edge. Um, so I did two two row to well I guess it would be four rows before connecting it to a side which gave me more depth I would knit back and forth one time without connecting and then knit back and forth again and connect and that gave me enough enough depth and then I did a flegal heel here so this is all flegal heel and then I did a a graft and mattress stitch so a kitchener and matchner mattress stitch to attach the heel up here um, and the way that you do that is you have live stitches on the heel where I did the flegal heel and then I don't have I didn't have live stitches around the edge of this heel top up here the spiral because those were the edges of my spiral. So I did the Kitchener stitches on the, for me, the, the heel stitches were my front needle. And then I would do a mattress stitch on the back needle and then go back to the front needle, do a Kitchener stitch. Um, that's something that I learned how to do when I was making the Frankenstieg socks. And it, I think it worked out really well. I haven't worn this sock yet because I haven't finished its mate, but I'm pretty, I'm overall pretty pleased with how it turned out. Um, yeah, I'm liking it. It is difficult with this pattern to gauge fit. Um, so I try, it's, you can't just assume anything about it. So I tried it on a lot and I think it'll fit pretty well. I'm hoping it'll fit pretty well. I really, really like it. And then I do have the second sock almost complete. I have the cuff, I have the toe. Funny story. So I did the cuff last night at eighth grade graduation and it's black yarn. You're not going to be able to see the difference. But the first cuff I did, I did a one by one rib. Well, I picked up for the second cuff before I went to graduation, but I knew I was going to, um, I was actually planning on working on it at school yesterday, and then we had lunch in the classrooms, and I was like, I don't know about working on this then, so I worked on a different project there. So I picked this up at um, graduation, and I did a different ribbing. So the first sock was one by one. This is a two by two. I realized when I got all the way through the cuff. It was only 10 rounds. I easily could have ripped it out, but it doesn't bother me that they're different ribbing. Um, I realized when I got to the end and I didn't have to switch off my knits and pearls to do a sewn bind off. I was like, oh, that's not, it's not my original intention. I had a moment where I was like, will I rip it out? Won't I? And then I bound it off. They're going to have two different ribbings. It's fine. I just have to do the heel on this and I am putting it off because no real reason. Just don't want to do it yet. Um, it's black yarn and the knit along is over. Um, I did the toe on Wednesday, the cuff yesterday. Maybe I'll pick up stitches tonight or maybe I'll just take it with me. I'll probably just take it with me to soccer tomorrow and work on it there it doesn't have any deadline it doesn't have any there's no push to get it done and it's a sock for me and you know you know i am not great about making things for myself so hopefully next week i next time i record i don't know if it'll be next week because next week is the zk and maybe i'll get something recorded before i go but maybe not who knows i'm so excited um, but yeah, I will, I have intent to work on this this week and finish it. It's so close to done. It just needs to heal. It's not even, 
that much work, maybe a couple hours with the grafting and all of that and picking up stitches involved. It doesn't take that long. I just need to do it. I just don't want to do it. So I'm not going to force myself tonight, but I will take it with me tomorrow when I'm crafting. And so the other project that I have been working on, I'm in the middle of a row. I'll be back in a moment when I'm at the end of the row. So this is the start of the tripartite sweater that I'm making for my sister. And I have actually put in a pretty decent, not great, but decent chunk of work. And by decent, I mean, I worked, I don't know, I think 10 rows yesterday, maybe, at graduation. Um, this is not my favorite knit because it's all garter stitch all the time. That's not my favorite thing to do, but I really want to have this finished this year, so I'm not taking it into another new year. And I figure if I just throw in a couple rows here and there, it will eventually finish itself. So I'm thinking that this will be my movie knitting this summer. I will take it with me to soccer tomorrow. I'm not starting a new thing, although I will be taking modular projects with me. And it will be my knit group knitting and stuff like that. I have very, very little left on my list of projects that I want to make or to start this year. No, to make. There was only one thing that I wanted to start this year but not um, make myself finish. So I'm almost through my list of things for people. Um, for Christmas and things like that. I don't know how much I will work on it every week. Um, I There will probably be weeks where I don't work on it at all. But I am going to try. It feels like it's time now. And I don't know if you have this, but sometimes I have projects that have been sitting there for X amount of time and then I just feel like I need to work on them. I feel like I need to work on this. I don't feel that I need to work on it to completion, but I feel like this will be a really good project to pick up this summer when I don't want to work on modular projects or I just want something that's already established. So this is, this is one of the projects that I I'm going to revive this summer. I also plan to pick up my sister's Ridgeback socks maybe tonight and get those. They're currently held on a um, like a 40 inch size one needle just so that I could take the needles out of them to use them for other projects. So I'm going to put them back on nine inch circulars so that they can be ready to go to the ZK or maybe not depending I might finish them before I go to the ZK I'm not planning on it but it could happen um, I I don't know because I don't know what's happening next week because we don't have school I know that we're probably going to the park and we're probably going to the beach and we're probably going to the library but I don't know when any of those things are going to happen or how long we'll be at any of those things so yeah that's uh I don't know when those will be picked up again, but this will be this will be traveling with me. So I think that this is going to be my bag of the summer. This is um, this was a zombie knit apocalypse knitting bag for one of the years I didn't go, and it was sent to me by a friend who I super appreciate. And right now it has this sock that I need to finish and this sweater with only the skein of yarn that I'm using right now. Um, and I think that will be a good, a good way for me to work it instead of having all of the skeins of yarn in the bag and making it huge. As I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by a car alarm, um, I think I'll carry around the sweater and a sock project and this bag and then I also have a new start. So this is the North Northeasterly. 
who I don't remember who it's by right off the top of my head, but it will be linked below. And I started this yesterday. I, my intent had been to not start it until tomorrow when the knit along starts, but I really wanted it. So I started it and here's what I have. Oh, that, uh, that car alarm woke up my daughter. It's good. So I started yesterday and started yesterday and this is how far I've gotten um, following the fingering weight pattern because I'm using fingering weight yarn and I'm just on the very beginning. Um, this is my first section. Uh, this I just decided to throw in a stripe here just for funsies. I don't intend to fade colors into each other. I just really wanted to put a stripe in there this morning when I was putting in this new color because I got to however long this first section is, uh, about five, five to six inches down the center spine. And I was like, um, that's a big enough chunk of this color of yarn. This is the I really, really want to say that it is from um, Undead Yarn, but now that I'm saying that, I don't know if that's correct. I'm pretty sure, though. So this is how much I have left, though. It's a really big mini, and I didn't want, um, like, a foot and a half <laughs> of this color just by itself. So I had a little ball of this pink color, and you can see... That's all I have left of the pink color. So just enough to throw in, you know, several, like about an inch of knitting. And now I'm going to go back to the blue until I don't want to knit with the blue anymore. And that may be until the end of the ball. That may be for another section. And then I will add in another color. My intent for the Northeasterly is to just use colors that I really, really like. Um, I have a whole other blanket. This is where, this is one of my two blankets where scraps go to just be used up. Um, so this is for, just for colors that I really, really like. And then the other blanket is for all of the scraps. Uh, it's for my boyfriend. He's less picky about colors than I am. And he thinks that everything I make is amazing. So we'll just let him think that. And... I will have just the things that I really, really like. I foresee this getting a lot of work over the um, over the knit along because my personal goal is not only to make a bunch of things. So my goal for the rest of June, starting tomorrow, I'm not counting anything I do tonight as counting, is to make or to finish 50 things. So 50 squares, a sock or something, you know, 50 things finished and also use 25 remnants. So as soon as this doesn't exist anymore, that would count as one remnant used. Um, when I get to the end of the first ball of this yarn, that will count as one remnant used. So whenever anything no longer exists in my stash, then that will count for that. So I foresee a lot, this being used for a lot of remnants used. I'm not going to count the balls used in here as a finished thing, but I think I will count a finished strip as a finished thing. So I'm hoping to um, finish multiple strips. We'll see. I have several modular blanket projects, and I'm thinking that tomorrow well it's supposed to be rainy so if it's really horrible lighting i probably won't rec won't record it but i'm hoping in the next several days to do some insta stories showing off my um my modular projects or i might just do like a insta post with all of them um with my progress and i would like to show off my mini skein stash, which is significantly decreased from last year. I did so much work um, finishing those two blankets, 
at the end of last year, beginning of this year, and I've continued to work on blankets throughout this year. So some, some portions of that are much decreased from last year, but I think it would be fun to see what I still have to be used up. Um, and last year I had intended to do kind of like a before and after for my mini skein stash, and I didn't do an after. <laughs> so I'm going to do a before this year, and then maybe an after next year. I can't promise that. But I know that my mini skein stash is much reduced because it was overflowing last year and now it all pretty much fits inside a milk crate. Um, and it was definitely overflowing that milk crate last year at the beginning of the knit along. So I also want to document it because I'm going to the ZK next week and um, I'm not bringing a ton. I'm still planning on just bringing the two pairs of socks and a spinning project. And then Haley is bringing um, a bunch of mini skeins and I am going to start a new square for Mary Lee's blanket and make some flower motifs while I'm there. And then um, that box is going to be posted back to me. So my mini skein stash is going to be revived and refreshed. And also I am, um, Josh sort of a knitter is picking me up from the airport and he is bringing his remnants to the ZK for Haley and I to go through and look at. So my my mini skein stash, I can't promise it's going to stay small enough to fit into that milk crate, but I think it would be fun to see what I had before the ZK and then what comes to me over the summer. Because I feel like my mini skein stash is much, much decreased from last year. Okay. I think I'm just rambling now, and my son would really, really like me to be done so that he can watch the TV, which is sitting right there, and he had to turn off so I could record. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I know what you're doing here. You're being all cute, trying to get your way. So, I hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string. Come hang out in uh, the Ravelry group. Come play along with all the small things. It's a really fun knit-along and anything you finish counts. So yeah, definitely come hang out over there. Oh, you know what? I don't have it here. I have one more work in progress. You know what? I'll talk about it next time. I'm going to make, I'll show it next time. I could, I could grab it for no, you. No, it's okay. Um, I started making, using the Rocco the Raccoon pattern that I turned into a wolf last month. No, two months ago now. Um, so I am using that pattern for a jumping off point. I'm going to make a little Santa ornament. I mean, it's not going to be little. It's going to be like 15 inches tall. But I have that mohair acrylic yarn that's red with red sequins. And I thought that would just make the cutest little Santa costume on that super elongated torso with little short legs. Oh my gosh, it's going to be so cute. Um, but I made the, the head and the hands this week. So it's not really exciting, but I did start that. So I thought I would bring that up. Okay, now I'm done talking about things. And stay tuned if you wanna see my More. stash. And then go ahead, say what you were gonna say. Um, like for more videos. Oh, you're cute. And like subscribe. You. You're the best, my kids are the best. Okay, I will see you. Maybe. Oh, and click the bell. So that you get notified when I post a video. Oh, here comes Mara. Also, if you're one of our new fans to here of, <coughs> of Bayfish Crest, Just Mary Fairy, <laughs> then get this video double thumbs up and comment down below. Is that possible? Okay. Did you make that thing? Let me finish up. Let's let's let these people do what they were doing with their day. So, I will try to see you next week. If not, I will see you in two weeks. I feel like 
recording might get a little hectic over summertime. We'll see what we can do. Hope you made something fantastic with your sticks and string. Ugh, that was a mouthful. Mouthful. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Guys, the ZK is so soon. So one of the things that is on the list for the ZK is a $20 skein swap. I pull all of these skeins out of their storage areas, put them on the bed, and really, really have a good look at my stash. So the first bit is my, I guess, my dragon horde of yarn. This is the yarn that other people get snarled at if they even look at it. <laughs> I know because I've offered to make people things out of my stash yarn and then whenever they look at one of these yarns, I'm like, except that one. That one's for me. I'm not sharing. So I should probably just put it all in its own cube. They're too precious for me to even use in projects. Ridiculous, right? Yarn wants to be used in projects. If I use it, it will be gone. Like these three skeins right here are hand spun, not by me, by other people. This is a special present die that Jenna of 716 Knit did for me, and I don't want to share it. Some of these are precious because the dyers are no longer dying, um, and some of them, some of them are just precious because they're for me, and I don't make myself things very often. This is my collection of stuff that is either earmarked for other people or can just live in my stash to be for other people. So. Nothing that I'm like, ah, I will kill you if you touch it, but it's still lovely and I would like to work with eventually. Um, that ball up there has been made into a sweater for my sister and I lost the ball so I had to finish it in black. These two skeins of Regia, the bottom ones for my boyfriend, the top ones for me for socks. I'm going to make myself some sport socks out of that. The purple right there, that's going to be for my sister. Um, this burgundy right here is going to be for my boyfriend's mom for Christmas for socks. So some of them are already earmarked and some of them are just lovely. And this is the stuff that I can live without. So starting from the top, that's some hand spun. This yellow is something that I picked up at a ZK because a friend was like, oh, you could use that. And theoretically, yes, I could use any of this yarn, but... It, I haven't in like five years and it's not inspiring me. This is some alpaca that my dad picked up for me. He thought that a sign sale and it actually said yarn sale at a barn near him. So he picked that up for me and I'm just, again, not inspired. Um, these are all 100% silk, which they are beautiful, um, but I don't have any urge to knit with them. So they should go to a home where things will happen other than just a little bit of petting every once in a while. This is, oh, what's it called? It's a Japanese yarn with long color changes. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? So these are two partial skeins. I picked these up from somebody on ZK years ago, and um, I used part of a skein to make a baby blanket for a stuffed sloth and then that's it this is and it's in its own bag because it has mohair and um mohair is a thing that people are sensitive to so it's by itself um my friend josh sent this to me so i could try and honestly i'm just i am sensitive to mohair so it's just not a match made in heaven this will likely be my $20 skein swap skein. This is a leftover of Hippie Penguin Fibers in the, the Dwarf King colorway, and it's beautiful. I think I used these to make fingerless mitts. I have about 169 yards left. Sitting in my stash forever, I just don't see myself using it. This is a ball of yarn that my sister just had wound at the local yarn shop. It is wool. It's fingering weight super wash. She thought she might make something out of it and then she decided she wouldn't. And um, I just have no desire to work with it. And then my friend Lisa gave this to me years ago. 
and the colors are I mean they're fine they're like autumnal colors but they're just not my colors so I'm probably going to take that know that all of this will travel with me to the ZK because I am only bringing a carry-on I'm not checking any baggage so we'll see how much of this I can pack in